So anyway, now that you can see what I'm doing here, basically what we did was we turn on polyframe over here. If you hover over anything in ZBrush, you're going to see that the shortcut for that is Shift F. And if you hold down Control, you'll get even more information. So you've got your own little help doc with every interface item in ZBrush, plus uh, hovering over, you get the name and the hotkey if applicable. So we turn on polyframe. And I usually, when we're doing hard edge modeling and through that, throughout this entire um, demo, just keep perspective off. It makes it easier when you're snapping to the side and snapping to the front and doing a lot of hard surface stuff to make sure that things are extruding um, straight. It's not such a big deal in 4R8 with the new gizmo, but when, you have, when you're using transform, so if I hit W and then hit Y to go into transform, and basically it's just toggling this on and off. When you're in perspective mode and you hit the transform lines and then you turn perspective off, see how they kind of skew out so if I was to want to like pull this in a straight line by holding down shift, uh, it's going to go whoop, and now it's like, whoa, what the hell happened? So that's one of the downsides of using perspective, having perspective turned on when you're using transpose. Now, if I just tap this now and go to the top, it's perfectly straight. So if I hold down control and alt, and then if I, it's kind of like, I, have, I don't have any masking on my object, but when I have, and I unmask this, it's going to do an unmask and then mask everything else. So that's kind of a new feature in 4R8 that's kind of, it'll speed you up a little bit. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and get rid of that Camtasia record. That was just to kind of set that. So now if I hold down shift and just go, it'll be perfectly straight. So that's a transpose woe. Uh, I don't think if I hit Y and that goes on our gizmo and I hit perspective and I hit X to go out of X symmetry here. So now with the gizmo, if I want to do the exact same thing, if I hold down alt and just tap a surface normal, that's going to align my gizmo to the normal of that surface. And now if I snap to the top and turn perspective off, oh, it is, it is still skewed a little bit. Okay, so when you're doing hard surface stuff, just keep that perspective off, keep it off. Now, if you want to, I thought to say you can't start modeling and then you can always like turn perspective back on. That's just P by the way, you can hit the P key. Uh, you can turn it back on and kind of judge it in perspective, but keep it off while you're modeling. If you do want to judge it in perspective, you can change your focal length over here in the draw menu. So you can change your angle of view here. So you can really crank it up to make it an extreme fisheye or way down. If you crank it way down, it's going to resemble more of an orthographic anyway. Whew. Okay. So moving right along. So spotlight basics and then blocking out the shapes here. And there's a couple different ways to block out the shapes. We've kind of already started to do it. So let's start fresh again. Let's go ahead and go out of edit mode here. Hit control N. And when I'm starting in ZBrush, if I want to start with a primitive, I'll go over here to the simple brush and I'll just grab one of these primitives. Or if I know I'm just going to go to a Q cube, which is that initialized state, because otherwise here, let's do this. So if I go over here and I'm like, oh, I want to start with a cube and I go over here, hit edit mode and I hit, um, now I'm in a poly primitive. I'm like, you know what? That's too many spans. I'm going to go down here to initialize. And while this is a ZBrush primitive, I can go down here and drop my H divides down. I'm like, okay, that's pretty good. Let's say this. And then I go to the top and I'm like, well, this isn't really going to help me that much. So what I would tend to do if I want to just use a cube is hit make poly mesh 3D and then go down to initialize. And after I've made it a poly mesh 3D, I no longer have primitive initialize options. I have these, um, Z modeler primitive option. So I can go to like a cylinder X, Y, and Z orientation or a Q cube. And uh, you know, you change your resolution here and hit Q cube. So you can like go one, 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 if you want to make a really simple cube, you're also going to notice it got smaller. So if I go over here to my star, it's that big. And then I go here to my Q cube, it's pretty small. I also tend to do deformation to unify. That makes it the same size as a ZBrush primitive. That's one way you could do this. Another way you could do it is you could start with any primitive. You can grab a Helix 3D if you want to, make it a poly mesh 3D, hit W, and then you can go into, uh, let's go to brush, insert BI. I'm hitting the B key and then the I key, and then I'm going to go over here to IMM primitives. These are H, these are half primitives, and we might get to that later when we talk about uh, mesh fusion that ZBrush has built in, but for this insert mesh primitive, I'm just going to hit uh, that key. And then I can hit W and now I can just cycle through uh, these ones here. So you can just pick out whichever primitive that you want. Um, another thing you can do, there's always so many things you can do in ZBrush. So another thing you can do is you can hit this little gear icon and you can choose your primitives in here. Now this is probably a pretty cool way to do it. So if I wanted to start with say a polysphere, I can just click that. And then you also have uh, X and Y divides over here. And if you want to change that completely, let's go over here to Cylinder 3D. So now this one here, uh, we have an inner radius. We can pop that in and out. 
and go through here for our H divides and our V divides that way. So that's a really quick way to kind of dial in your primitives as kind of a starting point. If you want to add a primitive to this, just hold down control and tap and that'll go ahead and mask this. And think about masking is just freezing it in and it's protecting it. You know, you're putting a masking shell around this so you can't affect it anymore. And now when you go back through here, actually hit W one more time, you're gonna see our gizmo is in here. And if you hold down Alt, you're gonna see that little lock pop up you can move your gizmo around and you can reorient it. And where you orient and move that gizmo is if you go into this thing and then you add, say, another cylinder, that's going to orient and position that gizmo where that cylinder is. Um, if I undo that and I hold down Alt, I can reset my orientation. And if I hit this uh, key right here, it's going to go to unmash mess center, which in this case it's mass, but it still went to the center. It's okay. That'll go ahead and put it right back in the middle here. So now... Uh, let's say I hold on Alt and I move this gizmo forward, or just reorienting it, or you could Alt tap in the front here. Now we go back in here, then we can choose like a ring 3D, and that'll put this ring in here, uh, wherever that gizmo orientation was, and then you could either um, scale it. I don't know where I would, why I would ever want to use that scale, maybe in a very specific case, but uh, you could scale this if we wanted to, and then you could change the inner radius of the ring, and then of course you got your S divides and your twists, so you can here, and your coverage if you only want half a ring and length divides here so you can kind of simplify that and then there you go so now you're happy if you're happy with this um, you can just hit w go back into gizmo mode and there you go now if you want to continue adding things just make sure you control drag to unmask and then control tap to mask all of those masking things you can get over here in this little menu here um, and if you want more info on this by the way we've already covered this but I figured it's relevant as far as talking about making primitives and video and um, ways to do that. But just in case, again, go to my YouTube channel here. And if you go over here to Zebras 4R8, what's new, you will see, let's see if we can find it over here. Yeah, here's a Zebras 4R8, what's new. And now you can go through here and there's like 68 videos on what's new in Zebras 4R8. And all of this is found in there, just the initialized primitives.